men asked the pilgrims whence they came, and they told them. They also asked them where they had lodged, what difficulties and dangers, what comforts and pleasures they had met with in the way, and they told them. Then said the men that met them, You have but two difficulties more to meet with, and then you are in the city. Christian then and his companion asked the men to go along with them, so they told them they would. But, said they, you must obtain it by your own faith. So I saw in my dream that they went on together till they came within sight of the gate. Now I further saw that betwixt them and the gate was a river, but there was no bridge to go over, and the river was very deep. At the sight thereof of this river, the pilgrims were much astounded. But the men that went with them said, You must go through, or you cannot come at the gate. The pilgrims then began to inquire if there was no other way to the gate, to which they answered, Yes, but there hath not any save two to wit, Enoch and Elijah, been permitted to tread that path since the foundation of the world, nor shall until the last trumpet sound. The pilgrims then, especially Christian, began to despond in his mind, and looked this way and that, but no way could be found by them by which they might escape the river. Then they asked a man if the waters were all of a depth. They said no, yet they could not help them in that case. For, said they, you shall find it deeper or shallower as you believe in the king of the place. They then addressed themselves to the water, and entering, Christian began to sink, and crying out to his good friend Hopeful, he said, I sink in deep waters, the billows go over my head, all the waves go over me, Selah. Then said the other, Be of good cheer, my brother, I feel the bottom, and it is good. Then said Christian, Ah, my friend, the sorrows of death have compassed me about. I shall not see the land that flows with milk and honey. And with that a great darkness and horror fell upon Christian, so that he could not see before him. Also here he is in great measure lost his senses, so that he could neither remember nor orderly talk of any of those sweet refreshments that he had met with in the way of his pilgrimage. But all the words that he spake still tended to discover that he had horror of mind, and heart fears that he should die in that river, and never obtain entrance in at the gate. Here also, as they that stood by perceived, he was much in the troublesome thoughts of the sins he had committed, both since and before he began to be a pilgrim. It was also observed that he was troubled with apparitions of hobgoblins and evil spirits. For ever and anon he would intimate so much by words, Hopeful, therefore, he had much ado to keep his brother's head above the water. Yea, sometimes he would be quite gone down, and then, ere a while, he would rise up again half dead. Hopeful also would endeavour to comfort him, saying, Brother, I see the gate, and men standing by to receive us. But Christian would answer, Tis you, tis you they wait for. You have been hopeful ever since I knew you. And so have you, said he to Christian. Ah, brother, said he, surely if I was right, he would now rise to help me. But for my sins, he hath brought me into the snare and hath left me. Then said Hopeful, my brother, you have quite forgot the text. Where it is said of the wicked, there is no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not troubled as other men, neither are they played like other men. These troubles and distresses that you go through in these waters are no sign that God hath forsaken you, but are sent to try you. Whether you will call to mind that which heretofore you have received of his goodness, and live upon him in your distresses. Then I saw in my dream that Christian was as in a muse a while, to whom also hopeful added these words, Be of good cheer, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. And with that the Christian break out with a loud voice. Oh, I see him again. And he tells me, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Then they both took courage. 
and the enemy was after that as still as a stone, until they were gone over. Christian therefore presently found ground to stand upon, and so it followed that the rest of the river was but shallow. Thus they got over. Now upon the bank of the river, on the other side, they saw the two shining men again, who there waited for them. Wherefore, being come up out of the river, they saluted them, saying, We are ministering spirits, sent forth to minister to those that shall be heirs of salvation. Thus they went along toward the gate. Now you must note that the city stood upon a mighty hill, but the pilgrims went up that hill with ease, because they had these two men to lead them up by the arms. Also they had left their mortal garments behind them in the river, for though they went in with them, they came out without them. They therefore went up here with much agility and speed, though the foundation upon which the city was framed was higher than the clouds. They therefore went up through the region of the air, sweetly talking as they went, being comforted, because they safely got over the river and had such glorious companions to attend them. The talk that they had with the shining ones was about the glory of the place, who told them that the beauty and glory of it was inexpressible. There, said they, is Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, the innumerable company of angels, and the spirits of just men made perfect. You are going now, said they, to the paradise of God, wherein you shall see the tree of life, and eat of the never-fading fruits thereof. And when you come there, you shall have white robes given you, and your walk and talk shall be every day with the king, even all the days of eternity. There you shall not see again such things as you saw when you were in the lower region upon the earth, to wit, sorrow, sickness, affliction, and death. For the former things are passed away. You are going now to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to the prophets, men that God hath taken away from the evil to come, and that are now resting upon their beds, each one walking in his righteousness. The men then asked, What must we do in the holy place? To whom it was answered, You must there receive the comfort of all your toil, and have joy for all your sorrow. You must reap what you have sown, and even the fruit of all your prayers and tears, and sufferings for the king by the way. In that place you must wear crowns of gold, and enjoy the perpetual sight and vision of the Holy One, for there you shall see him as he is. There also you shall serve him continually with praise, with shouting and thanksgiving, whom you desire to serve in the world, though with much difficulty because of the infirmity of your flesh. There your eyes shall be delighted with seeing, and your ears with hearing the pleasant voice of the Mighty One. There you shall enjoy your friends again, that are gone thither before you, and there you shall with joy receive even every one that follows into the holy place after you. There also you shall be clothed with glory and majesty, and put into an equipage fit to ride out with the King of Glory, when he shall come with the sound of trumpet in the clouds, as upon the wings of the wind you shall come with him. And when he shall sit upon the throne of judgment, you shall sit by him, yea, and when he shall pass sentence upon all the workers of iniquity, let them be angels or men, you also shall have a voice in that judgment, because they were his and your enemies. Also when he shall again return to the city, you shall go to with the sound of trumpet, and be ever with him. Now while they were thus drawing towards the gate, Behold, a company of the heavenly host came out to meet them, to whom it was said by the other two shining ones, These are the men that have loved our Lord when they were in the world, and that have left all for his holy name, and he have sent us to fetch them. And we have brought them thus far on their desired journey, that they may go in and look their Redeemer in the face with joy. Then the heavenly host gave a great shout, saying, Blessed are they that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There came out also at this time to meet them several of the king's trumpeters, clothed in white 
and shining raiment, who with melodious noises and loud made even the heavens to echo with their sound. These trumpeters saluted Christian and his fellow with ten thousand welcomes from the world, and this they did with shouting and sound of trumpet. This done, they compassed them round on every side. Some went before, some behind, and some on the right hand, some on the left, as twere to guard them through the upper regions, continually sounding as they went with melodious noise, in notes on high, so that the very sight was to them that could behold it, as if heaven itself was come down to meet them. Thus therefore they walked on together, and as they walked ever and anon, these trumpeters, even with joyful sound, would, by mixing their music with looks and gestures, still signify to Christian and his brother how welcome they were into their company, and with what gladness they came to meet them. And now were these two men, as twere, in heaven before they came at it, being swallowed up with the sight of angels, and with hearing their melodious notes, here also they had the city itself in view, and they thought they heard all the bells therein to ring, to welcome them thereto. But above all, the warm and joyful thoughts that they had about their own dwelling there with such company, and that for ever and ever, oh, by what tongue or pen can their glorious joy be expressed? Thus they came up to the gate. Now, when they were come up to the gate, there was written over it in letters of gold, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Then I saw in my dream that the shining men bid them call at the gate, the which when they did, some from above looked over the gate, to wit, Enoch, Moses, and Elijah, etc., to whom it was said, These pilgrims are come from the city of destruction, for the love that they bear to the king of this place. And then the pilgrims gave in unto them each man his certificate, which they had received in the beginning. Those therefore were carried into the king, who when he had read them said, Where are the men? To whom it was answered, They are standing without the gate. The king then commanded to open the gate, that the righteous nation said he, that keepeth truth may enter in. Now I saw in my dream that these two men went in at the gate, and lo, as they entered, they were transfigured, and they had raiment put on that shone like gold. There was also that met them with harps and crowns, and gave them to them the harps to praise withal, and the crowns in token of honour. Then I heard in my dream that all the bells in the city rang again for joy, and that it was said unto them, Enter ye into the joy of our Lord. I also heard the men themselves say that they sang with a loud voice, saying, Blessing, honour, glory and power be to him that sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb for ever and ever. Now, just as the gates were opened to let in the men, I looked in after them, and behold, the city shone like the sun. The streets also were paved with gold. And in them walked many men with crowns on their heads, palms in their hands, and golden harps to sing praises withal. There were also of them that had wings, and they answered one another without intermission, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And after that they shut up the gates, which when I had seen, I wished myself among them. Now, while I was gazing upon all these things, I turned my head to look back, and saw ignorance coming up to the riverside. But he soon got over, and that without half the difficulty which the other two men met with. For it happened that there was then in that place one vain hope, a ferryman, that with his boat helped him over, so he, as the other, I saw, did ascend the hill to come up to the gate, only he came alone. Neither did any man meet him with the least encouragement. When he was come up to the gate, he looked up to the writing that was above, and then began to knock, supposing that entrance should have been quickly administered to him. But he was asked by the men that looked over the top of the gate, Whence come you, and what would you have? He answered, 
I have ate and drank in the presence of the king, and he has taught in our streets. Then they asked him for his certificate, that they might go in and show it to the king. So he fumbled in his bosom for one, and found none. Then said they, Have you none? But the man answered never a word. So they told the king, but he would not come down to see him. But he commanded the two shining ones that conducted Christian and Hopeful to the city to go out and take ignorance, and bind him hand and foot, and have him away. Then they took him up, and carried him through the air to the door that I saw in the side of the hill, and put him in there. Then I saw that there was a way to hell, even from the gates of heaven, as well as from the city of destruction. So I awoke, and behold, it was a dream. In our last reading, we read of two shining ones who announced to the pilgrims that there are only two more difficulties left, getting across the river and getting through the gates of the city. Both of these experiences are clear in their meaning, and for the Christian reading Pilgrim's Progress, such will be the portion of all. The crossing of the river symbolises death, and entering the gates of the Golden City, entering heaven itself. It may be thought that surely there is no obstacle in entering heaven, but as Bunyan has done throughout his book, we must remember that not all who say, Lord, Lord, shall enter in. Death is a harsh and foreboding experience for all people, even for the genuine Christian who is armed with God's promise and in possession of peace with Christ, it still presents itself as an enemy. Christian and hopeful, when they see the river and realise there is no bridge to cross it, wonder if there is another way. They soon find out that only two, namely Elijah and Enoch, escaped death. Death is before all until that generation lives that will see the return of Christ. Even in these experiences, the pilgrims are reminded that such must be approached by faith. They are told that according to their faith, so will their experience of the crossing be. For some, the waters will be shallow, 